medical students have been stratified many times. We're at the top of the class in high mm. school, so I got to college. And they're at the top of their class in college, so then they get to medical school. But if you are average in medical school, that is very painful for some people who are not used to that. Yeah. And that can really mess with their identity. You're not gonna get an A in everything anymore. Yeah. It's nearly impossible. Yeah. That doesn't change who you are or your value. Yeah. And Welcome back to Charlene Care Pods. It's another episode with a special guest, Dr. Adam Wright. This is actually the second part of a two-part series. Uh, if you haven't watched the first two episodes, it's great. Definitely need to check that out. First one is there is hope in many your joint pain. The second one is searching with joint replacements with Dr. Wright. This is a great episode. We're talking about what it means to be a doctor. And let's go. <laughs> So me and Dr. Wright were talking, and we were talking about there's there's not enough emphasis on education mm -hmm. for healthcare workers once they get ready into the field, like right into the field. And so we were just chatting about his experience as a resident, as a orthopedic surgeon, and we just wanted to talk a little bit about things that I that we believe that can help people who are interested in becoming an orthopedic surgeon things to look out for. Um, but yeah, we just were like, we just see it a lot. You know, we were just talking about it. What, what were some things that you would, that you wish someone told you when you were like, just got into residency? You know, like just or just in general, what were some things you could think of? I got lots of great advice. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for me, what I probably needed to hear mm -hmm. Uh, and understand, which sometimes you can only understand through going through it. It's just mm. that it's, it's a process. You know, one of the things my dad would always tell me is to just enjoy the moments. Mm. And I was terrible at that for a long yeah. time. I think all um, of us are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I think the only thing that taught me that was having a child, mm. you know, and becoming a dad and realizing that there's more to life than just my career. Mm. I think that probably actually made me better at my career hmm. because it put it in the proper context of yeah. where it should be yeah. in the priorities of life. Yeah. Do you think, do you think, I was just thinking about this because you told me about the story a while back ago, like some crazy stories in residency, but do you ever think that like doctors just kind of black out residency? Like they just kind of like in the back of their head, they just forget about like, yeah, that was a period in my life that was super crazy. Do yeah. you feel that sometimes? Yeah. I mean, there are moments where you think back and you're like, I can't believe I used to stay up for 36 hours you know, routinely, you know, Ooh. two or three times a week. Like, this is just insane. Wow. I mean, if I go to bed past 1130, I'm yeah, exhausted. I'm like, yeah, know? that's crazy. But I'm not in call shape anymore, you know. <laughs> I'm, man, I'm an old crazy. man now, Charles. I'm like 35, <laughs> you know. I, 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 <laughs> The kid, the kid, the, the kids, the twin year olds, you know, <laughs> the twins, the twins. Yeah, really yeah that's. I didn't have any gray hair until the twins no, got here. No, no, I had a yeah, same. I had an afro before yeah. I had, before I had two kids. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So what 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 do you think in terms of when you're, when students are like literally okay, they're going to go into med school, right? Mm. They've got their mind focused on going into med school. What are some things that you would advise someone that's like saying okay? You know, they picked their school, they got accepted, right? They got accepted and they've done, they've worked hard, they've done all their undergraduate, they've, their whole life they wanted to become a doctor. Um, they're focusing on books and exams and learning and what are some things that, that, that you feel are like from a, maybe like a soft skills approach yeah. or some things that some, there's some things that just have to be learned that sometimes can't be learned in school. So it, Medical students have been stratified many times. They, what do you mean by that? Yeah. They were at the top of the class in high mm. school, so they got to college. And they're at the top of their class in college, so they get to medical school. Mm. So they have been lumped several times at the top. You may think you are really smart, and you may have been the smartest person in your high school and your college, and yeah. you are now entering into a group where everyone is that. Mm. So if you are average in medical school, that is very painful for some people who are not used to that. Yeah. And that can really mess with their identity. There are also a lot of people who get into medicine f for not the best reasons. Maybe they just thought it was a good thing to do. Mm. There's great respect for doctors. Maybe their parents made them do it. 
And some of those people really go off the deep end in medical school. Yeah. You know, they may not have been part years in high school or college, or um, it, they were doing this, taking this career path because someone told them. And it doesn't mean that you still can't find love in what you do, but there are a lot of people in medical school hurting. Yeah. Um, from the rigors of the institutions and pressures, uh, from the rigors of the classes, just from the financial stresses, yeah. it's hard. So I think not losing yourself, changing your mindset that you're not going to get an A in everything anymore. Yeah. It's nearly impossible. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. That doesn't change who you are or your value. Yeah. And there's a lot of people around you hurting. Yeah. People are going to go through stuff in med school. People yeah. are going to have their first kid. You know, they're going to see people die. Yeah. You know, they're going to have family members get cancer, yeah. and yeah. people are running to them, and they don't yeah. even know all the answers yeah. yet. And there's a lot of opportunity to help the people around you, um, even while you're all going through it. Mm, yeah, you learn a lot about yourself. Um, I had a mentor tell me that he wished everybody could go through residency mm. just because it really shows you what you're made of and it shows you what you can do and it gives you the confidence to go through other things that are harder in life later and I've never forgotten that because it's really so true. true. Yeah. Medical school's that way too. Wow. It, it builds character. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. But I think that's a good point. I'll go ahead. Yeah. I'll say but, but I mean that's just what I'd say to people that are going into it is it's going to be hard, and if you know it's going to be hard, and what parts are going to be hard, like mm. life's all about expectations, I think. And, mm. and if you know what parts are going to really rock you, yeah, that makes it easier. Yeah, yeah. It's the surprises that are no fun. Ooh, that's so true. Yeah, and that's a good point because I think a lot of times it's also knowing who's who's maybe like maybe four or five years ahead of you mm -hmm. that just maybe just came out of residency. I think creating those relationships with people who are like maybe above you and saying, "Hey, how did it go? How are what are some things that they're just fresh out?" You know, and it's like yep. I think that helps too. You know, our med school did a good job of kind of pairing you with somebody a year above, and then you nice. pair with somebody below you. But ideally, that's how residency residency should work too. Is mm -hmm. you pick your attendings that you want to be like, and that our, my residency program was awesome. Like yeah. we, we got to know everyone personally and their families, and mm -hmm. um, you really got to be like these people, not just in the operating room, and you mm -hmm. wanted to be them, but also how they manage their family, and yeah. you know, yeah. how they took care of people, and just who they were as people. Yeah. yeah. How do you balance taking care of yourself and being in residency? You don't. <laughs> um, you just know it's a long season, uh, and certain seasons are easier than others. I mean, you know, there are times where you're working, you know, 100, 120 hours a week, it's just impossible. You know, you just try and eat good food and you try and have the routines that are healthy for you, but you know it's not gonna work and you just get excited for when you have a weekend. Yeah. Um, but you you learn what's important and what's not mm -hmm. and you learn what are, are good habits and, you know, you, I love Smashburger, but I couldn't go all the time, <laughs> you know? But uh, you try and go to the gym when you can. Yeah. And, um, you, realize what is really rejuvenating for you. Yeah. You know, spend time, for me, you spend time with my family, my kids, mm -hmm. and um, go on vacations when you get the chance. Like, yeah. don't leave any of those on the table. Yeah, yeah. So now, like someone who's just graduated high school and they're looking at Dr. Wright. Yeah. They're like, that's who I want to be, right? Break down like the timelines for someone. Ooh. You know, break down it's, the timelines of like. It's a long road. <laughs> yeah, like, so just like, because I'm thinking like, okay, if I'm in high school now and I'm like, I'm just watching this and I'm like, oh man, who's Dr. Wright? He's an orthopedic surgeon. Okay, I'm going to be an orthopedic doctor. But like, break down like the timelines of like undergrad, right? Like, what does that look like? Well, here's the depressing part is if, <laughs> if you've graduated high school, you have to repeat all of that time to still get to where I'm at. Jeez. You might not get your first real job until you're 30 something. Yeah. So if you are going to wait till you become an attending physician to enjoy life or think that your life matters or has value, yeah. you're going to be very sorely disappointed. Yeah. You have to like, like my dad said, you have to enjoy the moments all the way along. Right now. Because yeah. life is happening now. Yeah. It's a long process, and you have to see it as mm. that and realize there are going to be different parts along the journey that are more fun than others, mm. but it is a lot of fun. Even if it's your internal medicine rotation, you know you definitely don't want to do that, you're going to learn stuff there that, you know what, your grandma might get this condition, and you're going yeah. to be glad you know. Yeah. Your neurology rotation, 
you see people having seizures, you might have a family member that goes through that, then you're going to be glad you know what it is. Wow. So the process after high school, four years of college, if you can get it done, four years. Mm -hmm. And you can major in anything, like we've talked about. Um, biology. Biology is what history. most people do. I, I did biomedical science with minor in history. Sewing? Uh, that? Yeah, that would be great for surgeons. <laughs> um, <laughs> Committing. B business would be good too. Yeah. Uh, one of my best friends in medical school did theater arts. And nice. you know, it, there, there are pros and cons to everything. True. Um, and then there's medical school. Typically you're applying in your third or fourth year, uh, okay. doing internships, trying to get shadowing hours. There's all sorts of ways of doing that. Um, really you just need to know if you want to do this or not. Yeah. And you don't need to know what medicine. You'll figure that out over time. Then there's medical school, which is four years. Uh, for orthopedics, residency is five or six years. Plus then, the four? Yes, and then <laughs> there's fellowship typically after that. How many years is that? Uh, it, it depends, uh, anywhere from one to two years for orthopedics, but uh, other subspecialties, it's sometimes three years. So four, four, five. five. And then maybe three more. Four, four, five, three. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's right? a lot, yeah. So, I mean, I graduated high school at 16, mm. um, and then college at 20, med school 24, residency 30, um, and then fellowship 31. 31. Wow. And now you're here. Yeah, and then I got, <laughs> finally got a real job. Yeah, yeah that's it, yeah. <laughs> And then you started enjoying life. Now. Right, <laughs> right. That's, really, that's such a good point. I think for all of us, I feel like, you know, whenever, whatever you aspire to be or aspire to do, like that, when you get there, you're not going to find fulfillment. It's for find, It's like finding fulfillment today and, mm -hmm. and, and, and who you are and what God has for you and then, then going from there. The, the bigger house, the bigger car, the better job, the title, it's not going to be your yeah, ultimate happiness. Yeah. Now, yeah. There, it might be good, yeah. and there are going to be things about it that are great, yeah. but there's always going to be yeah. something bigger. It's really important. I, I like what you said about, about students that are in med school or in residency, like their, their identity, yeah. right? because they are going into an industry that is that is needing people who are there for them, right? We're here to serve others. And I think if you're going into the industry to to get something instead of give something, like, it, it'll hurt you more, you know? And, and I think, like, it's, it's very important, like you said, if, if students in residency or just any healthcare worker that's in school, just know that, you know, number one, take care of yourself, you know, and take care of each other. As, a, as students, like take care of each other, watch out for each other. If someone just had passed away or someone loved one, like take care of each other because that's actually you're practicing being a clinician when you're taking care of your fellow students, you know, like. You're picking up all those emotional cues and realizing like who's really having a rough time. That's really good. That, that'll make you a great doctor, make you a great friend, that's a great really spouse. Good. Like, so, so practice those soft skills with each other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Um, when I was in residency, when I was on call, those call shifts were brutal, you mm. know, and you'd, you'd be awake for 30-something hours easily. I felt like the Lord gave me a patient that I talked to every night that made it worth it. That's you know, cool. That either the family member was really scared about something and yeah. I could calm them down, yeah. or there was somebody that I'd go home and tell my wife, I'd run through all the things that I'd seen the night before, and and always I could say, and this is who I was supposed to see That's last cool. night. You know, this is why I was on call, because yeah. I felt like I really was able to make a difference for this patient or this family member, or I really learned something that I know I'm gonna use. That's cool. And that was how I learned how to enjoy those little moments and to really realize in, in the process of getting there, mm. like these are all the things that the Lord leads you through. These mm. are all the people that he has for you to meet. And, you have to mark, just like with your kid as they're growing, you have to mark those small milestones, mm. like their first steps. Like yeah. It's, yeah. it's not them graduating from college, but it yeah. means something, yeah. you know, yeah. and you have to note those all along yeah. the way. Yeah, that's good. That's good. How do you balance, like, we were talking about, like, how do you balance being a dad and, like, a husband and uh, a doctor? Like, how do you do that? You know, I talked about this a lot. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And we we like to think about you know your priorities and your roles. And, yeah. 
And for me, when it comes to making decisions, big ones and small ones, I, I think about my identity. Mm -hmm. And f I can spell that out easily. Mm -hmm. Number one, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so every decision mm -hmm. I make has to line up with that. Yeah. Number two, I'm a husband. Yeah. And so I, I have to submit number two, number one, mm -hmm. and make sure that my decisions match up with that. Mm -hmm. I'm a dad, mm -hmm. and that's number three. And then I'm a doctor. Yeah. Now sometimes somebody breaks their femur and they're in pain. Well, number three can jump ahead of soccer practice and the date night I had planned for tonight. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But that's how I think about all those things. Yeah. And you have to make time for the things that are important. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes that means, hey, listen, I'm going to end clinic early, which means I'm giving up on income, or yeah. I'm going to take a vacation day. Yeah which is hard to do sometimes when you feel like you're getting the swing of things yeah. because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Or I am going to go volunteer here or go on this you know, mission trip or do mm. things that are maybe outside of what you feel like your primary mission is because you know they're important. Mm. As far as being a dad, I mean, that is the most fulfilling thing that I do. Yeah. and. It can be hard to do that and be fully engaged at the end of a busy day in surgery or in clinic. Oh, gosh. And every parent feels that way, yeah. you know, yeah. whether they're an orthopedic surgeon or a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we all just try and stay refreshed as much as we can. But really, it's just making time and I think not taking yourself too seriously. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I think one of the things that we always talk about is like you know, what, what our foundation is, right? So like, you, know, you build a house, you build a house, you make sure the foundation is good, yep. you know, and, and anything else will be fine. And I think uh, as, as healthcare workers, as doctors, as clinicians, it's, it's, we have to have a strong foundation, you know, and for us, our faith is in God. Our, our, our foundation is, is in him and who he is. And then from there you build everything else, you know, but I think it get, life is hard, you know, it's not, it's not, you get hit with, you know, we were just talking about, you know, I got the flu and, you know, both of our kids are sick and, you know, just everything. And I think in those moments when the other ones, like you got God, wife, kids, job, and all those things kind of get shaken, right, with sickness, disease, loss, then, the, you know, God's still there. Yeah. You know, I think we talk about it all the time. It's just like he's always there. He's our strength. He's our hope, you know. And... uh it helps us do what we do. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. We couldn't, do, we couldn't do what we do, you know? I, I mean, you're the CEO when you go to work. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I don't feel like it. <laughs> but, but at home you're not, no, you know, no. you're, you're, you're dad, you know. <laughs> you you yep. still got to yep. clean up poopy diapers and yep. all those sort of things. Yep. Like, and, and there's a yeah. there's a humility that comes with that. Yeah, my son, last week he, he just came up to me and he was like, hey, dad. Just kick me in the nuts, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, I was like, like just like I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, but it, he's like, mm, it's good to see you, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yep. like, good to see you too. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> 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 like, what? <laughs> it's crazy. That's awesome. Oh yeah. man, yeah, it's uh, life is crazy. <laughs> it's good. All right, if you're watching this, thank you so much. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe this video. It helps, I think, the algorithm a lot. And uh, I hope this helps and educates you well. So let's keep it moving. When I was, because I always wanted to be a doctor. I, don't mm -hmm. know if I, I always wanted to be a doctor when I was a kid. And uh, then I went to college. And then when I went to college, um, well, before college, I was like, I wanted to play soccer yeah. and be a doctor. I was like, I can't do both. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like, let me go and do soccer at a school, D1 school, and then be doctor of physical therapy. And I went through, graduated um, my bachelor or my undergrad, and then didn't make it through the doctor program. Hmm. And so I was like, man, this is what I've, what I've always wanted to be my whole life, and I couldn't do it. And I think I struggled with like my identity. Like I struggled with like. This is who I felt like I was always supposed to be. Yeah. But then it, it took like other people around me and, you know, Emily, my wife at the time, like, no, your heart is, you're, you're, you you love taking care of people. Yeah. So the doctor was really just like the title, but who I was is just caring for people. It doesn't, you know, matter the position, but I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of kids don't talk about that. Yeah. Well, that's your process of maturing and realizing mm. that like 
there's a lot of doctors who don't care about people, mm. you know, and they have the title, but they're terrible at doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's true. And I mean, there's there's a nurse that I work with in the OR all the time, Anissa. Yeah, Anissa. yeah, 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 yeah. She cares for people. Oh, she's awesome. And she's you know, inspiration to everybody that yeah, works yeah, with her because yeah. she like every little detail, like she she cares for us. Mm. Like she makes sure that we're not dehydrated. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, like the, that the people that are in the OR they got a break to go to the bathroom cool. in between cases. She's holding hands of the patients that are nervous. Like she's not the doctor, but she does a better job. Yeah. Caring for people yeah, and yeah. seeing those needs, yeah. she's empathetic. She does a better job than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that you can do that in any role that you're in. Best people caring for people are typically not doctors. Yeah, oh, that's that's true. It's it's the heart behind it. Yes. You know, it's it's like the calling and feeling like this is what I'm meant to do. Yeah, you know, that's really true. Yeah. What Did, do you think? What are some? What yeah, are you? I was gonna say. Something I've seen a lot lately is after people are graduating, they're doing a gap year, especially people who are really mm. in medicine. Yeah. And uh, I'd say 80% of the people I know who have done a gap year don't return to being going straight to like that path that they were originally doing, like a doctor. Because there is how hard it is yeah. once they get a, get a uh, break from it. It's like they kind of like have a, a breather. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think I think we have a big problem coming down the pike of people who get trained up in something and then don't do it and yes. then realize how like if we don't incentivize hard things yeah as a society we're in trouble yeah and i don't know how we fix that other than we actually value people who do things for people and who yeah. work hard and who do quality work in every industry in every, every in, industry and in, in everything i mean the people who put together a quality car that's great because yeah. you don't want your car <laughs> breaking down. You know, you don't want your tires exploding. Man, you don't want that's so you want true. your car last forever. That's you know? so true. Yeah, it's it's. I think there's um. I think it's it's um. Being uncomfortable is important. You know, <laughs> like it's, yeah. It's being uncomfortable. It's you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. When it comes to like anything, right? Healthcare, you're not leadership. Gonna, you're not going to grow unless you break down muscle fibers. Like you That's will it. not and act get stronger. And heads. <laughs> yeah, you won't. Not going to get stronger unless you have a little bit of destruction first. Yeah. I had uh, an attending, Dr. Hamilton, in residency. He mm. used to say, "You don't learn unless you're a little scared." Oh wow. So he says you need just a bit of adrenaline. Just a little bit. Not yeah. so much that you're going to make a yeah, bad yeah. decision. Yeah, he said, yeah. But so, and. A little the, bit of that sympathetic and yeah, kind of pimped. That's yeah, exactly yeah, what you say. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. in, in the medical training process, you, you get what's called pimped. Yeah, yeah, so they're yeah. asking yeah, questions yeah. all the time. And yeah, he yeah. would say, like, you know, the, re the reason I do this is because I want you to be a little nervous. Yeah, you yeah. Know, because then you'll actually think in your feet. Then you have awesome. adrenaline. Then you need those neurotransmitters with the adrenaline to actually yeah. form a memory. Yep. If you're relaxed, you're not going to form a you memory. Won't. Yeah, yeah. You'll be you know? chilled. <laughs> Which is why, I mean, when you're going through the medical training process, you're taking exam after exam after That's exam. true, that makes sense. You learn more from the questions you get wrong than the ones you get right. That's true, yeah, yeah. At least if you're doing it right. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. And I always, talk, I always think about this, I, was, I always think about the reality of, okay, well, we're, we deal with an aging population, right? Mm -hmm. That's like, a, we're, we're, we're dealing with people who are, you know, 50s and up, right? And that aging population is continuing to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. There's such a big demand for doctors, for healthcare workers who are in there, and I think what we were talking about is like, if if people don't realize that, okay, why am I doing this? Like, what's the purpose of it? Like, I always joke around. I was like, okay, if you're gonna go into healthcare, you better make sure that you really have a passion for it. Yeah. Or if you don't, you need to go work at Burger King. Right. Like, and it's nothing wrong with working at Burger King at all. Like. But it's is there's two different things. You can either make more money somewhere else, or love what you do here. Yeah, do something where the consequences are not as big. Yes, these are people. Yeah, these are people's lives. That you know, I was talking earlier about how I just felt like when I was on call, God always brought me one person that this is who I was supposed yeah. to see tonight. Yeah, like that still happens. Like mm. there's, you have to pick a moment of your day every day where you're like, yeah, this is the difference I made today. Yeah. And that, I tell my PA, like, there's just moments 
where we walk out, somebody's doing great, somebody's crying because they had a good result mm. and they can do things they want. And we high five each other and we're like, that's why we do this job. That's you know? a, That's the main reason I think, I mean, that's what gives us I think it's just being thankful and grateful every day, right? And I think I, I think it's good. That's a good life thing for everybody. Like not just if you're in healthcare or just in general. It's like you know being grateful for the day that you do have today because tomorrow's not guaranteed. Yeah, you know gratitude. I mean that's that's what pulls you out of depression. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah that's what it gives you an anchor on where you're supposed to be. And yeah, yeah. I think I think the identity is huge, and I know I felt more confident once I knew I was accepted into medical school, right? Because mm. I knew that, hey, at least I got a stamp of approval from somebody, mm. right? But I still had to earn that, yeah, you know? no, but yeah, yeah. that at least was like a weight off my shoulders that I felt like, okay, I'm going to make it. But it was a long process of realizing like that that's, that doesn't define you though. Mm. You know, like what if, you know, what if you become the greatest surgeon in the world, but then like you get in a car wreck on the way home and your hand's paralyzed. Yeah, who's that, Doctor Strange? Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. like that could happen. That could happen. That could happen to me. Yeah. That could happen to me on the way home, and yeah. I pray that it doesn't. But if it does, that doesn't change my intrinsic value. Yeah. And there's still things that I can do with my life. Yeah. Yeah. And I think do you, that's another thing that I think, you know, like in the '80s where it was like. Doctors and lawyers, like mm-hmm. right, the thing, right? Yeah. Now it's like influencers. Influencers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And yeah. so it's like the, the tides have turned, right, yeah. a little bit. But I do think that the tides haven't turned because the, the nothing changes under the sun. There's still a need for people to be cared for, mm-hmm. whether you're an influencer or you're a doctor, yeah. right? And I think is if people are getting into the healthcare industry. Then you remember, yeah, that this is about people, you know. This is about people, and also making sure your identity is is solid. Well, if your identity is in Christ, mm-hmm. you're loving God, and then you're doing everything you can to love people. You're winning. Th- these these callings and these professions that just naturally flow from that. Yeah, and it's it's easy in a way mm-hmm. because you know that's what you're supposed to be doing the, the practice of it can be hard yeah, yeah. Uh, but when you have to do the paperwork and the billing and you know the, the studying yeah it doesn't feel like you're loving somebody in that situation it's true that's very true um but you realize it later yeah yeah but almost every every job yeah you can find those moments yeah there's a phrase i don't know i don't know who it was maybe it was myron golden or something else some um leader he was talking about uh work either works on you or for you. Hmm. So if it's not working for you or you feel like you're failing or you're getting a C in class or not performing, it's actually working on you at that time. Yeah. Like building character, building discipline, building um, things. And so I think it's a, that's a big thing. To, it's just in life in general. It's like, okay, if, if the outcome isn't the outcome that you want, it's working on you. Yeah. It's building you something. It's It's making you a better person. It's... And if it's working for you, then that's, hey, it's good. <laughs> yeah. So true. Yeah. But no, this is great. We're we're literally hanging out here, and we're about to go eat. So let's do it. Like let's go eat. Fries. <laughs> See you guys. All right. That was good. Dude, that's awesome. That was like, we flew through that. Ah. Yeah, we flew through. I like it. I like it. I like it.